Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. The customer lived minutes away from the store. He refused to pick up the parcel, so the delivery turned out to be expensive for him. The second story. Karen said that all my work should be under her control and I agreed. She disappeared for a while and my work was delayed. The third story. Client wanted express delivery of the package, but the fact is that express is much faster, but it costs more. On to the first story. Do a chargeback then. You won't get a refund. Okay, I will. A couple of years ago, I ordered an express parcel delivery from the UK to the USA via one of these third-party parcel shipping companies. For those who are unfamiliar, they're a middleman, and they hold huge accounts with UPS, DHL, FedEx, etc. They then offer cheap parcel rates and pass some of this discount on to the customer. So I ordered an express 48-hour delivery with one of these delivery companies for my two parcels to the USA. This cost me around £100 for the two boxes, and from experience using this delivery company in the past, they have a delivery guarantee, which offers me a full refund of all carriage charges if any part of the shipment is not delivered within 48 hours. A few days later I was told by my customer that the boxes had arrived two days late. Not a problem. I checked the tracking number and it had been held up at the UK-based air freight terminal, which entitled me to a full refund of the carriage charges. I then contacted the delivery company, but I was told that although I was fully entitled to a full refund, I'd have to speak to the third-party shipping company. I contacted them by phone and I was told that they don't issue refunds for delayed parcels. I explained that this was a guaranteed service, and the delivery company said that I was entitled to a refund. At this point I was passed on to a manager by the call center operative without even asking. The manager was very obnoxious, and wasn't bothered that my parcel had been delayed. In his opinion I shouldn't expect it to get there on time when I had paid such a low price. So you want a full refund just because your parcel is delayed? Yes I do because that is what was in the terms and conditions. But you didn't buy the extra insurance. No, I didn't because the delivery already included a thousand pounds of insurance anyway. Well, we don't do refunds for delayed parcels, and especially if you haven't paid for the insurance. At this point, I was getting pretty annoyed because he was making up this idea of buying insurance to cover for delays. The insurance only covered total loss and damage anyway. So I explained that if I didn't receive a refund, I would simply initiate a chargeback on my credit card for the payment. At this point, he raised his voice and told me, Fine, try to do a chargeback then. We will fight it and you won't get a refund. Yeah, your parcel was late, but that doesn't mean you get a free delivery. I ended the call and got straight on the phone to my credit card company. They went through a rigorous process with me and asked for a copy of the original invoice, the terms and conditions. Within 24 hours, they'd refunded the full amount back to my card and sent me a letter giving me the reasons they found the chargebacks in my favor. It also explained that the merchant, the shipping company, had 30 days to contest the chargeback. However, 30 days came and went and the money was still showing as refunded. Six weeks later I received an email from their customer service team telling me that they were willing to give me a partial refund of 10% to compensate me for the delay. Obviously somebody hadn't realized that I'd initiated a chargeback and now it was too late. So I replied and politely explained that I was told by the manager, stating his name, to initiate a chargeback because their company doesn't issue refunds, even when their terms and conditions say they do. Therefore, as far as I was concerned, the matter was now closed, as my credit card company had given them 30 days to reply to the chargeback, and they had not replied. Therefore, the chargeback was granted. Not only did I never hear anything back from them, but I haven't used this company since. Edit. They said that the third party will be able to claim a refund for the delayed package. Therefore, they will be able to forward the refund on to me. Instead, they wanted to claim the refund for themselves. Come to think of it, maybe that's why they contacted me six weeks later to offer me a paltry 10% refund probably after they'd received a full refund from the delivery company. My understanding is that OP tried to ship something, and the shipping company promised a refund if the item was not delivered within two days. It was delivered but a few days late, and this exchange occurred in an attempt to get the promised refund. It was the company's own fault for not compensating you for the delayed package. It is clearly written in the company's policy to refund all shipping costs. They should have refunded your money right away. Very often getting a late order is just as bad or even worse than not getting it at all. That's the whole point of guaranteed delivery times. Many companies are willing to pay completely absurd amounts for guaranteed dates. A contract is a contract, and you have to abide by its terms. If you say you'll get your money back if they're late, you better get your money back if they're late. In fact, you could have charged them the idiot tax and agreed to the 10% they were offering. Then you would have gotten 110% of the original payment. I wonder what happened to that manager. Did she keep her job or was she fired, demoted? The second story is, Prevent us from fixing your stuff without your approval? 
I don't see what could go wrong. On one of my previous jobs, I worked with server maintenance. My tasks mostly consisted of monitoring servers and fixing problems before customers even noticed them, fixing problems that customers experienced, and upgrading software and hardware. There were some other stuff involved, but they are not important to the story. One thing to note here is that none of the work I did was included in any contract or agreement with customers, meaning everything I did had to be logged and was then billed. This made the admin part of my job consume more time than I would have liked. One day I receive an email from sales. Cheap customer, as the name implies, was very cheap and generally very hard to work with. They were very disliked by most of the company. Cheap customer now demanded that any billable work exceeding 30 minutes had to be approved by Karen, their tech manager. Now the admin part of any incident could take at least 10 to 15 minutes and basic troubleshooting an additional 15 minutes. So we're already at the limit before we can even start fixing it. Anyone with even a tiny bit of experience knows that this is a recipe for disaster, which is what I told sales. Sales in turn responded that they tried to tell Karen this, but Karen shot them down. She was adamant on not paying a penny more than she had to. Because of this attitude, their entire server environment was a mess. We had offered to clean it up and make it better and more reliable, but this would cost extra so they refused. Fast forward a few weeks. Our monitor software picks up that one of their database servers suddenly ran out of disk space. Some troubleshooting later, I find that it had generated a massive log file for whatever reason. I try to call Karen, but she doesn't answer. So I send her an email. At the same time, one of their web servers went down. None of their websites are now working. I don't know if these two were related, but they very well could have been. Again, I try to call Karen, but no reply. So I send her another email, asking for approval to continue troubleshooting and fixing the problem. By now, our service desk has been getting calls from cheap customers' users. Service desk forwards several tickets to me but I simply reply that I'm awaiting confirmation from Karen, as per her request. Service Desk in turn forwards this answer to the end users, who in turn tells us that Karen recently boarded a four-hour flight. Chances are very high that she's not going to read her email until she lands. A little more than an hour later, word reaches the CEO at Cheap Customer, and I'm put on the phone with him. He immediately overrules Karen's policy and grants us approval to fix everything. It was solved by rebooting some services in roughly 15 minutes. Oh, and remember the tickets I got from Service Desk? Responding to those technically counts as work. So with one phone call with the CEO, half a dozen ticket responses, as well as two tickets of malfunctioning services, what should have been a 90-minute job resulted in me billing almost three hours. I'll admit I exaggerated a bit. This in addition to three hours that the servers were broken meant that the company lost a lot more than they would have done if they had just allowed us to work normally. As for Karen, she still worked at Cheap Customer when last I heard. She made this incident into her personal vendetta and canceled the contract with us. She and the rest of the company would not be missed, but later I found out that she was demoted after all. I think this Karen deserves to be fired, not demoted. She ruined your job and she hurt the company. Employees who want to appear important by breaking the system should be fired. After all, what could have been done in 15 minutes without her confirmation ended up taking three hours. It's a loss to anyone for the company. I don't understand people like that. They think they know better than the people whose job it is to do what they think they know better. I say give them a shovel, let them dig themselves a hole, and then watch as it starts to rain and the walls start to crumble. If she lets you work in peace, all these problems wouldn't exist. And now the company has to pay for it. Was it worth it? But on the other hand, it is the customer, and you have to do what she says. So you did your job well. The last story is... You want to pay the postage? Okay. So I recently started working at a new job at a Canadian retail company that has online services. My job is mainly to pick items that were ordered online from the store aisles or from our warehouse, arrange for them to be picked up and have them ready to go by a set time every day. We average about five to six items per day, most going to places that are between a half hour to a two hour drive distance, depending on the direction it goes as other retail stores can cover the same area better than we can. Now I live in a smallish city and the company that picks up the online purchases with a lack of a local terminal, have to go to the capital to their sorting site before traveling to their destination. This means a minimum of two days before it gets to a customer, but could be up to a week depending on delays. So we reach out and try to convince customers that live locally to pick up their purchases. Usually once they realize that it would take 20 minutes to get their item, and without charging the extra cost of delivery, most are willing to pick their items up. Now of course there are the exceptions. I'm not talking about the elderly and physically disabled who cannot make such a trip. We implemented at our store a delivery exemption initiative for these people. We deliver it to them for free. No, we're talking about this one customer. He lives literally down the street from the store, as in a three-minute drive down the street. As in we have employees who walk past his house, 
and he ordered not one, not two, but three items. Put just over $500 on his credit card for this, and one of them shipped out to him via the delivery company. We saw immediately that it would cost him almost half on top of what he's paying for the items to ship these. I forgot to mention that all postage is paid by the customer. So I call the customer, explaining that where his purchases were coming from, the extra cost and time of delivering these through the company, and that he could save both if he came to pick up the items he ordered. His response? I have ordered these online and I expect they will be sent. I clearly try to explain that his items were coming from down the street, not from a store elsewhere in the province. His response? I don't care where they come from. I expect my online order to be delivered as you would with anyone else. Okay, will do. Cue malicious compliance. After hanging up, we did as asked. I let the manager know about this order and his instructions, which he laughs at and shrugs his shoulders. We picked his items, scheduled a delivery for said items, had all three picked up. Delivery guy looks at the delivery address, looks at me and gives me a WTF look. I explain that he wanted it shipped like all other online deliveries. He laughs, shakes his head and takes the items. So the next couple days I track the order as it travels over two hours to the sorting facility, stays overnight, is on the truck for delivery and finally is signed by the guy. Not an hour later he's at the store, demanding the cost of his delivery back. Manager explains that we tried to help him, but in his own words, shipped his online order as we would as anything else. Edit, and since it might have been buried below, I'll explain more about what he and we did. When a customer orders an item online, they're offered a regular and an express option. Express is much faster, but has a higher charge than regular deliveries. Depending on the size and weight, it can cost anywhere from 50% to 200% more for express delivery. He chose express as his option, and we obliged, and his items were on the heavy end of the spectrum. Edit 2. He lived minutes away from the store, not hours away. Our range for covering online purchases ranges two hours from the northeast to the southwest, and half hour from the southwest to the northeast, because we overlap with another store. The customer wanted an express package and he got it. He could have saved the money, but he refused to do it, and you have to follow the policy and deliver his package the way he wanted it. The OP did explain shipping costs. The customer sure didn't listen. He could have picked up the package himself since he lived minutes away from the store, not hours away. All this could have been avoided if he had just really listened to what the OP was trying to tell him. I once ordered something for my wife. It was a gift and I was counting on timely delivery. The warehouse was 20 minutes away, and it had to be shipped to another city 60 miles away, go through a mail sorting center and then come back to me. The price was small, but the time delay was precious as it was a gift. I ordered it somewhat late and was waiting to get it to me sooner. I wish they would let me drive up to the warehouse and pick it up. I definitely would have done that, but unfortunately the package came later. Don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day.